Welcome back everybody. This is part three of the Jacoper battery review. Now these Jacoper batteries were provided by Orient Power to me uh, for the purposes of the review, but that review is now done. So in this video, we're just gonna make some modifications. I'm gonna break out from the factory way of installing this and we're gonna hopefully make it run cooler and thus more efficiently. <laughs> Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Now the original way that the factory had me uh, orient these wires is by daisy chaining. So we're jumping from one post down to the next post to the next post. We saw in the previous video that these wires were getting hot. 59 Celsius or 138 Fahrenheit. I've never been a fan of daisy chaining batteries together and I try to avoid it on my builds. In this case, uh, Jack Per puts two terminals on each battery so that you can daisy chain them together. It makes for a quick, simple, and easy install. You don't have to buy additional hardware and that keeps the cost down. However, these wires do get hot, these jumper wires from one battery to the next, because a lot of amps are being carried on them. In addition to that, there's a jumper inside here that was also getting hot. Now I demonstrated all that in my previous video. But in this video, which is part three, we're gonna make some modifications to this rack and hopefully the whole system will run cooler when we're done. So we're gonna be using some extra components that I purchased with my own money to make these modifications. So we're gonna take all these wires off, we're gonna add a bus bar, a fuse, put the wires back on in a new orientation and then run a test again and see how much cooler we can operate this rack. Now I think it's going to help us uh, be more efficient because the less heat loss you have through heating up wires or heating up jumpers, the more efficient the whole system is. You want that energy being stored inside the battery, not being lost to the environment as heat. The information in this video is going to be applicable whether you're running the Jacoper brand batteries or one of the other batteries that's designed for daisy chaining together or perhaps you just have some old uh, flooded lead acid batteries sitting around that you've got daisy chained on the floor. And in all those situations, if you run them to a central bus bar, it's going to increase safety and increase the efficiency of the system. So it's applicable to all those systems. Uh, I'm not a fan of daisy chaining and hopefully uh, when I'm finished with this video, you'll understand why. We're going to start by taking off all these wires and then I'm going to move over to the workbench and we'll talk about the bus bar and fuse that I've picked out for this rack of batteries. Now when I do that, remember that each battery is rated for 100 amps continuous. There are four batteries here, so 400 amps continuous potential. Now these cables that you can purchase through Jacoper's website, they're not bad. They're four gauge. It appears to be a silicone insulation jacket on it. Uh, it's rated for 200 degrees C and the ring terminals are crimped on and the ring terminals seem pretty nice. So there's nothing wrong with this cable, but four gauge is really not meant for the full 400 amp potential that this rack could deliver. There's a little rubber cap that I pushed down to uh, expose the terminal. Those rubber caps came with the battery. They did not come with the cable. So even if you're making your own cables, those rubber caps will be uh, included as buying the battery. <laughs> Over here on the workbench, there's just a little bit of work that I'd like to do on the uh, bus bar before we install it on the battery. Now I was able to get the fuse holder with the fuse and the plastic cover for the same price as I bought this one single fuse from a different seller. Uh, because with supply shortages, uh, the price of fuses have really skyrocketed. So I found this to be the best deal uh, that I was able to track down. I will leave a link in the description below. In this case, this is a 300 amp fuse. It's rated for both AC and DC. Now it says 200 KA interrupting rating, but that's for alternating current. If you look at the spec sheet, it's actually 20,000 amps uh, for DC, and it's rated for 125 volts DC and 20,000 amps uh, short circuit interruption. So that is a 
beefy few setup. Now these Pike Industries, they came with uh, some screws and these are coarse thread wood screws. Uh, so they're gonna go in the end. Now the, the fuse holder from Magnum Energy did not come with any screws, but I had some in my collection uh, that work and there are also some wood screws style. So instead of screwing these to wood, I'm gonna screw them to a piece of HDPE or high density polyethylene. So I bought a sheet of HDPE. Now this, uh, you could just buy a cutting board actually. This is the same material that they sell for cutting boards or you can just search for plastic sheet material uh, and you can find this. I bought it through eBay. I found that to be uh, a good source when you're trying to get these really big sheets. I trim those screws flush so they won't interfere. Next step, I'm gonna build a jumper to go from this post to this post. So they're at slightly different heights. So the jumper is gonna to have to come down a little bit. So I have this piece of copper bar. This is an eighth of an inch thick and one inch wide. So right there, I'm gonna to have to bend this a little bit. So right now it's not square in the vise, so let's make a little adjustment. There we go. Got a little bit of a zigzag there. Let's go see how well it fits. So you can see if if it's flat on this side, it's too high over there. So we're gonna flatten this out just a little bit. And there it is. I shined up the two ends after cutting it and it looks like we are laying flat on both surfaces. So at this point I'll put a piece of heat shrink on here and then we can bolt it down. Isn't that cool? Right there says 20 foot pounds. That's for this one. This one might be a little bit lighter because it's a slightly smaller stud. So I found a couple of pieces of slotted angle in my scrap pile. And I found that if I remove three screws I can put the slotted angle on here and then screw it back in place. And this thing is now on here really strong. That was a good yank on it and it's not wiggling. Uh, it's held off the face just a little bit from the front. And in the back, I can still feel the screw coming out through the backside of the nut. So there are enough threads to do this. Uh, but I don't think I can get a washer on there. Uh, there's 
just not enough uh, distance of that thread. Good job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good job. Now put the lock washer on this bolt. This? Yep. Twist it or this? Just push it on. Don't do that. Going to put this up here. Where no way it is. Good job. Yep, and that big nut. It's so big. Perfect. That's great. You're doing great. Keep going. You're doing it. That's right. Good job. <laughs> oh, good job, sweetie. <laughs> Yeah, let Daddy double check it. Okay, and now this one can go right here and tighten that one up. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> you did so good putting that red cover on. So, from the front, it's protected. You can still get at it from the sides. All right, we're almost ready for our load test. Yes, this is going to find out how much more efficient running them in bus bars is. All the batteries have a dedicated four gauge wire now going to the bus bar. I think this is gonna wind up running really cool, like lower temperature, which means more energy efficient, because every time something gets hot, you're losing energy. We don't wanna lose energy and heat, and then have to also run an air conditioner to remove that heat. We want this setup to run cool, as cool as possible. That means it's gonna be as efficient as possible, and it's going to be safer and less likelihood of things loosening up. If these terminals wind up getting really hot on us, they could loosen up over time. So I just finished running the 4 ot wire onto this uh, fuse block. This is a 300 amp fuse. So let's get this cover on. There we go. So it is a Magnum brand, but that won't matter. And now we can start... Turning things on. Okay, it looks like all of them are in on status. We should be full on all of them. So we got 53.4 volts, and if I remember correctly, yep. Everything is full right now. And remember our app here is reading off of the Bluetooth, which is right there. That is the Victron Smart Shunt. So we're connected up with Bluetooth to the app and we're gonna be able to see how many amps we're pulling out. And we're gonna try to load this up as much as possible. These inverters are 5,000 watts each. We're gonna try to get as close to 10 kilowatts total on the system. And we're gonna run it for an hour and see how hot everything gets. I have not moved this temperature sensor. So right now we're at 20.7 degrees Celsius on that jumper bar right here. Uh, and then we can also check internally. Our temperatures are, you know, about 20 degrees across the board. So, so we're turning on our two inverters and I'm keeping the solar energy off right now. 
So no solar energy is going to assist. All the power is going to come from the battery. We're going to push this thing hard for one hour. Remember in the previous video, we had these all daisy chained together, jumping from one post to the next post, and things got really hot. All right. There we go. Turning that on. The dryer is on here. So we're going to turn on this water heater. I'm going to crank this up. It's full of wet clothes right now. Temperature is on high. There we go. All right. 93%. Let me turn on the mini split too. All right. So we're up at 97, 98%, 99, 100%. Nice. That's awesome. All right, let's start this test. There we go. We're started. And it says here that we're drawing 210 amps. Nice. All right, so now when we check our main, we've got 220. Up here, 52. 54. 57. 55, 52. So notice they're really well balanced. Top one is 52, 54. You would think that the wire on the very top, which is closest to the load, would be pulling the most amps, but it's not. Down here, got 55, farther away. So the position of the wires on these bus bars doesn't matter. What we're seeing is slight changes internal resistance inside the batteries. How well the batteries were constructed and made, and that's what we're seeing for variations. Not its position on a little bus bar. These are all balanced. They're all drawing equally, uh, you know, within a couple of amps of each other. This is awesome. We're getting about 220 amps on the top wire, but then coming down on the negative, 168. 113, 58, and then the main positive, 220, 162, 107, and 52. So we're just going to let this run at 100% and 99.5%. And we'll come back in an hour and see how well we did. So we are half an hour into the experiment. Everything is still running. 97%. We still have 206 amps flowing through here. This says 50.97. 51%. Fifty one point five nine and fifty three point seven two. And this one's down here at the bottom, but it's actually uh, drawing more. So again, position on the bus bar to the load doesn't matter. One hour into the test, things are still running. Oh, see what happens over time is the heating element in the dryer kicks on and off. It has an internal thermostat. So that'll jump back up very quickly here. But we're currently at 100 amps. Let's see what our temperature is. 29.2. That is so much lower than it was last time. I'm gonna put up the old temperature. So we've got 214 amps, 48 degrees Celsius on that middle brass jumper bar. And let's check out the temperature here. got 125 Fahrenheit or 51.8 Celsius and should be similar down here 
59 Celsius or 138 Fahrenheit. We've still got the 200 amps coming through. And once again, let's look at what our temperatures are. I saw 78 there for a sec. 25.5 Celsius. Again, I'll put up the old temperature. Here we go. Again, I'll put up what the old temperature was before. Let's try this one. Oh, I see an 85, 86 closer to the bus bar. Let's check it out over here. Let's see here. Seventy-nine, eighty. Wait, come on. Where was that temperature? Eighty-five. There we go. That's a hot. Twenty-nine point nine. So that's about as hot as it gets after an hour. <laughs> Let's check out some of these internal temperatures. And once again, that is a lot less than last time. Now I duplicated the same loads that we had in the video part two, uh, where we had all these daisy chained. So let's look at some of the numbers. Uh, in, in the first part with a daisy chained, the hottest wire that we saw was 138 degrees Fahrenheit, which was a 70 degree delta or a 70 degree rise in temperature over the ambient air temperature in the garage. Uh, now, with the centralized bus bar, uh, we saw this wire right here get the hottest, and that got up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which was an 18 degree Fahrenheit delta, or an 18 degree rise over the ambient air temperature in the garage. So that, <laughs> that means that these wires are now running 52 degrees cooler than they were before. I mean, that is a massive reduction in temperature loss. Uh, or 29 degrees Celsius uh, uh, cooler than previous. Now remember, all of the heat loss out of a system is energy loss. And that because it's the middle of summer, the heat loss into this environment means I have to run additional energy uh, for the air conditioner to remove the heat from this environment. So we really want all of our electrical components to run as cool as possible, so they're as efficient as possible. Another way of paralleling all four batteries together uh, might be to connect them with a solid copper bar from top all the way down to the bottom. So you could purchase a solid copper bar for about $50 that's three, three foot long, and you could run it down the face with a hole drilled for each terminal and bolt it directly to each battery down the line. Uh, and this sounds like a great idea. Now there's two reasons why I chose not to run it that way. Uh, one is over here on the negative side, uh, no matter which port you choose, you're going to wind up covering the screen uh, and these RJ45 uh, ports. <laughs> so I didn't want to cover anything up. Uh, now over here on the positive side, there's two terminals. You could choose the one towards the middle and not hide the circuit breaker, and that's cool. But over on the negative side, you will hide something. So I didn't want to do that. And the other reason is that when you are pulling a lot of amps through a solid copper bar, it's going to heat up. And that means it's going to stress this terminal. It's going to push upward on this terminal and push downward on the bottommost terminal. And then when it cools off, it'll shrink back. So uh, in doing that, you'd have to cut an oval shape into the bus bar to allow for that little bit of movement, uh, which, okay, we, we could do that. We could cut an oval shape, but then you're going to have to have that maintenance of making sure you always go back and uh, periodically retorque those because they will eventually loosen up those bolts. So I felt that by running a four gauge wire on each battery, we're allowing for more flexibility uh, for heating up and cooling down cycles. If you do choose to do this, it's not necessarily a bad idea. There's just some other things to consider when doing it. Uh, and uh, this would actually be less expensive to buy a couple of three foot bars instead of buying the, uh, the pre-made cables and the central bus bar.
Uh, but I think this works out well. Now, in my opinion, having a central bus bar with the wires running to it from each battery and then a fuse for each stack of batteries is probably the best practices. And hopefully I've demonstrated why I believe that to be the case in this video. So I really hope this video uh, shines some light on why I am such a big fan of central bus bars and how they can really benefit your system. Just please make sure that you size it correctly uh, for the amps that you might potentially be moving through it. Uh, so, hey, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Please check out the links in the description below. If you use those links, some of them are affiliates and they really do help out this channel a lot. Uh, so thank you everybody so much for watching.